This video is sponsored by Unity Alfa Romeo. You're going to have to come back to me for the next one to find out um, what I think of this car compared to my 2017 model. Are the carbon sparkos comfy? Do the gas particulate filters make a difference to the sound? The thicker glass, the interior, lots of subtle changes for this 2020 plus model. Folks, you join me on the way to work. Um, where is it today? It is uh, the nondescript city of Toronto. <laughs> Just another place, single night, back tomorrow through the night. Anyway, um, this is my daily driver. Uh, for those of you that have been following me, it's my second Julia Quadrifoglio. Last one was the, uh, the blue one, Monte Carlo blue, arguably one of the prettiest colors, the other one being this one, um, Montreal Verde. No, I did not really expect to buy this car, but it uh, popped up on the market. It was a price I could afford. I was uh, in the other car for four years, and I just thought, to be honest, I'd uh, fancy a little bit of a change. I'd always kept an eye on this car. I believe in fit. And uh, it, uh, it's something that I saw in the showroom um, a little over a year ago now uh, for 85 grand. I picked it up for a little under 60. So uh, there you go. The deal is done. Uh, last video was the drive home, uh, the initial first impressions. Uh, brief summary is that it is a bit more uh, grown up uh, than the other car. Uh, thicker glass, more sound deadening, just making it that kind of perfect uh, daily driver or improving um, on that. What I'm less enamored about is the, uh, the kind of the emotional side of things, which is all to do with the engine and the engine note. So um, getting down towards my favorite parts, the car's nicely warmed up because I'm a few miles away from this bit, but uh, let's, put the, let's put it down now. I do have the valves open in, uh, well, dynamic mode, I suppose. We're in manual. And that's it, up to the legal limit. Now, I'll insert a clip of the 2017 car uh, with the different exhaust, of course, no OPFs in there. Uh, particulate filters and uh, it's a little bit more raucous. As always, last time, my favorite bit. Oh yeah. So yes, uh, some complete differences uh, between the, uh, the cars, of course. Uh, the last video I had a microphone out back, so maybe it's not really a fair comparison. We're kind of, what, two weeks in? At this point, um, I have done ooh, just over 500 miles in the car, so that's not bad. Um, two or three times to work in general, pottering around, um, and you know what? It's been effortless, really. We're showing 121 miles to the fill-up, so you know what? I'm early for work, and I am going to um, call for some fuel. So I really just wanted to, um, you know, fill you in. Has the car lived up to my expectations? Is it what I expected? Um, my thoughts on the carbon seats. Having sat in them for more than 10 minutes. Talk about dislikes and uh, likes. I'll start with the, uh, the nitty gritty initially um, and then get on to the more positive stuff. So initially went to pick up the car and there were no floor mats so I managed to salvage those out of my um, old car, pop them in. However, uh, Unity say they had ordered a set, so I'm still waiting to hear for that. Got down the road, realized it's somewhat more subdued than uh, the original car. And I really wanted that sensification with the exhaust. Now, the old car had an AHM 
um, exhaust valve controller, which is really nice. The valve stayed open all the time on that car. Um, I have now moved on to a Squadra, so I contacted Stefan over at Squadra to see if we could do something in the, the way of a kind of a, a deal, um, a collaboration, or a kind of a promotion uh, for his products. And he said he wasn't interested. He'd kind of lost all faith in YouTube and social media. So his uh, suggestion was that I just go out and buy one. Um, so I did. So thank you very much to Mo, uh, Mo Asif, uh, on the, uh, the Julia Forum. Um, he's just sold his 2022 car. Very similar spec to this one, except he had the carbon ceramic brakes as well. So Mo's car sold in about two hours from putting it uh, online. So it goes to show uh, the right spec and the right combo and the right color uh, will always sell as and well. So that uh, kind of bodes well. Anyway, Mo had a couple of extra bits um, that he was willing um, to sell to me, being the, uh, the Squadra tuner. Now it's the performance logger. It lowers the splitter for cleaning. Um, still in getting to grips of it, but you pull the trigger and it opens the valves and it memorizes that for the next time. So another suggestion was that uh, I lower the armrest and let some of that natural uh, music pipe through from the, uh, the trunk area or the boot area. So we've done a bit of that, um, but it's still refined. It's still a bit growing up. Uh, as far as fuel consumption is concerned, there were suggestions that these uh, port injection um, cars use a little bit more fuel. Initially, that's what I thought, but it was the way I was driving it. And uh, it turns out that on a long run, my 110 mile round trip down to London Heathrow, um, it's doing similar MPGs to the other car long term. Uh, fuel consumption was 33 miles to the gallon um, and this one is exactly the same so time will tell we're logging it um, let's see where we're at right now well in the last to do, do, do what have we done 264 miles so far on this tank 29.2 miles to the gallon 487 miles down the route and we're 29.4 so maybe fractionally less but i have been using this car for kind of local drives and just enjoying it um so maybe that's a little bit less than usual um secondary so that was the drive home really it rides well um the seats i found comfy at that stage go home I had a look through the paperwork and you know how excited I get about paperwork, especially I've been a long-term follower of the channel uh, when I bought my E38 7 Series, which I still have. Um, I was really excited to see all the paperwork that came with that. So anyway, looked in the, um, looked in the glove box, no owner's manual, no uh, driver's wallet as it were, just a cheap plasticky thing, not even a service history. No, uh, indications in the car here that it was serviced just prior to me getting it. And that would have been the kind of the one year annual service, five and a half thousand miles so done on time, not necessarily on mileage. However, I've got no record of that. I've got no receipt. Um, I've got nothing in the ways of something I can pass on to any prospective new owner. And it's about the journey. It's about documenting the history of the car um, to sell it on. However, I voiced all those concerns to Unity and uh, Joe promised with me that they're on the way. Um, nothing heard as yet. Sometimes things are a little bit slower in Alpha Land, especially with parts and relays are concerned. Um, uh, whatever. So we're waiting to see what happens there. I will update you, of course, as and when it happens. I asked him to, uh, on the last video, we mentioned about servicing costs. We'll get onto that in a moment. Anyway, so the exhaust note is sorted with the Squadra. Um, <sighs> Not sure I'll do much more on that. Not gonna do a deep dive at the end of the day. I'm not sure I want to um, help out a company that were completely dismissive of me. Um, so anyway, um, it, it is what it is. Next thing was um, tires. Um, the Pirelli courses that on this a bit squiffy, especially when it's a bit damp and cold and wet. And we have been getting our fair share of dry weather recently, which is unusual for the UK, but it, uh, it turns wet fairly quickly here. So that uh, is a concern for me going into the winter. I got the last car exactly the way I wanted it. And I had some Michelin Pilot Sport 4S's on there, plus 10 mil on rounds, which worked to keep the rolling radius sort of similar for the, all the ABS system and stuff like that. Um, and they were perfect. They were very little worn when I actually um, traded my other car in, which was something I was really disappointed in because these courses will be replaced in due course, but it's gonna be a thousand pounds. So I'm gonna replace it as and when. 
just getting to the fuel station now. So I'm going to stop this recording and I'll, uh, I'll see you in a moment. Reset trip B. 370 miles range. It's one thing you notice that there isn't a massive range, so I'm kind of getting two, maybe three. I don't like running the tank too low, um, but that was mostly problems associated with the early cars, the 2017 that I had, um, low fuel pressure. So it was kind of recommended on those cars not to run in the red. No idea what this one will be like. Again, I said early on that, uh, you know what, regular um, 95 unleaded was good enough for the cars, and I'm sure they will run with some sort of a detune, probably, in, probably on the, uh, the ECU. However, after Matt Armstrong blew up his uh, RS6 in the States using uh, less than uh, a <laughs> less octane than he should, should we say, the uh, car started running hot and in the, uh, he ended up blowing his engine. So you know what, I'm acutely aware of the fact that low octane is not necessarily um, good for cars with pre-ignition, etc. So it's uh, the premium stuff that goes into this uh, these days. So you know what, at 150, it's kind of prices have settled down a little bit here in the UK. Um, and, uh, and that's what we're doing on that one. So I mentioned uh, the cost of uh, servicing this car. It is a consideration, of course, um, for next year. No, it looks like the service packages and the Alpha Care or the Aftercare packages uh, that were so enticing previously on my last car um, are, uh, that is the, uh, someone beside me here, as I indicated, um, and that's the kind of the uh, collision alert. Well justified. I like that, you know, the blind blind spot monitoring on this. We'll get onto the ADAS in a second. It's actually another positive, believe it or not. Anyway, cost of servicing. The last car, 2017, I got in before they upped the prices. It was kind of three services for 750 odd quid. If you have everything anything, if you have anything other than a quadrifolio, that price will still stand. However, for the quadrifolio models, um, prices have increased uh, considerably, um, over three times in fact. So it doesn't make it just as obvious uh, to go and pull the trigger on some of those Alpha Care deals. Certainly for a new car where you're getting three years servicing um, for um, a few hundred quid as an incentive, absolutely go and do that if you're specking a new car. But on a used one, uh, firstly check it's, it may well have that service pack in place. If you go to owners at Mopar, um, then you'll be able to put in the registration of the car that presumably it was uh, registered under. Um, if it's had a, a reg change like this one, it might not appear um, in that. But if you know the original registration, hopefully you'll be able to check on the owners, um, add it as your car and then see what deals are available. So that's the way I, I recommended to check. So a two year service pack, including the VAT and the tax is uh, 1568, 1568 quid. Now, if that was to include the four year service, then it gets, starts to get a bit interesting. It means you effectively pay for the four year service and get another oil change service thrown in for free okay uh, the three-year service however two thousand three hundred and I want to say 70 pounds two thousand three hundred seventy pounds for three years um, it's uh, it, it starts to make it a little bit more expensive now I would have thought an oil change on service on this about 400 pounds or thereabouts at the uh, the OEM yeah even 1500 plus for the belt service in year four all sorts to make that three-year service deal not that uh, interesting to be honest and of course then on the other hand they've got the uh, the specialists which i will contact and that'll be the content of a whole new video about uh, main dealers versus specialists versus alpha care packages um, and all the rest of it so i don't have to decide anything until um, next year uh, when the uh, effectively the first service under my ownership is uh, is needed i'm tempted just to pay for the next oil change and then pay for the uh, the year four service via a two-year service pack that would be the intention and then if i wanted to fix prices i could add another three-year service pack before the car is five years old and take that into years five six and seven so that is kind of where we're at with the servicing um on that one but more in-depth video to come. So let's talk about the positive. It's just stunning. I love this car. I have an emotional attachment to it already in the way it came to be in my hands. 
Um, even though I parted with the thick wedge of 60 grand, I still feel as if I got a good deal on the car. It was the right car for me in the right spec. Um, and probably, if I looked hard, I would really struggle to find another one in this condition from that particular dealer um, at that particular price. So there's always pros and cons about buying a car um, on the used market. Plenty of these cars have been modified. Plenty are running over 600 horsepower with a mild stage one tune. Now you might like that, you might be into that, but right now I wanted to keep it stock. It feels as if I am the first owner of this car, albeit at kind of two thirds of the initial cost. So that's always a good thing. But this ADAS, this self-driving has grown on me, should we say. I had the radar cruise on the last car. I did a video, and again, there's the link about the ADAS 2. That was in a, a Julia, that was in a, a loan car when my own car was getting in for service. And I didn't really warm to it, I have to say. However, since I filmed that, I've had much more experience driving this particular car. I don't know whether it's been updated or not. I presume it's the same ADAS 2. And I believe even with the Tonale update, the more modern cars, the 2024 models have been updated yet again with the ADAS software. This is kind of saves my life every morning, having been up all night. Sometimes I've been up for over 24 hours. I've struggled to get to sleep before report, maybe in a random outstation, and I failed to sleep in a bunk for a couple of hours, maybe two or three hours when uh, we're airborne. And we do that with heavy crews, as we call it. Not because of the weight, because of the numbers, you cheeky, cheeky monkeys. Um, so that was kind of, kind of it. So sometimes I'm, I'm getting back into Heathrow at 6 a.m. in the morning, and I am dog tired. This car with this ADAS has saved me on several occasions. You've already heard maybe the blind spot monitoring, but it may be crude, but it is safe. What I really like about Alfa Romeo's is the fact that it gives you the options in here to specify how far over and above the speed limit you would like to go. When the sign says 70, you can take out some of the error in the, um, the actual electronic display and the speed display on this because most cars tend to overread, which means you're actually going slower than you would be normally. So at 70 miles indicated, 70 miles per hour indicated, you're actually doing 67. So it gives you a means of offsetting it to 73 perhaps to do a real world 70 GPS, which is really, really nice. I've not seen that in any other cars. Also quite Italian-like, it'll go, there's the sign with the speed, um, would you like to obey it or not? And it gives you a one-touch option to do that. I really, really like that facility. Sometimes, maybe if it misreads a sign, you have the, the kind of the right, you dictate. You can turn off the bells and whistles. I've been using the ADAS here. Have you heard any noises that weren't justified? There was that one where the car was in my blind spot and I indicated, um, and of course he was there. Um, a, an absolute genuine warning. But too many cars bing and bong over the speed limit. This is of a generation that it gives you options. I can turn it off in the system and I don't need to reset it every journey. Now, more modern cars, I would say in the last year or two, it has to be activated straight out of the box. When I don't use lane change assist or lane keep assist or whatever it is, the warnings, it doesn't come back on. I come back into this car and it remembers everything that I've turned off and I applaud, I applaud Alpha for that. There's no bings, no bongs, only those that uh, need to happen. So I mentioned on the negatives, the, the kind of the sounds, the exhaust, of course. If this was a weekend blaster, that's probably all I would want it to really do. I want it to be a major sense of occasion. I want the crescendo of the noise. And that's something that the 2017 cars delivered. Now, with the OPF, slightly muted, really quiet on startup. 
someone else suggested because I was only driving in dynamic mode that the exhaust valves are still modulated in that mode and uh, they don't go fully open until they're in race mode so you know what maybe that was my part of my disappointment however um, with the Squadra I, I hold the trigger in and the valves open and it memorizes that and it stays open so whilst not just back on a par with the 2017 cars I think it's good enough um, to be kind of satisfying but But on a real positive side, this car rides smoothly. I have no real intention to mess with the suspension. I think it's perfect as a daily driver as it is. Now I'm going to hold the trigger and quieten it down a bit. I don't know if you can notice any difference. And it's quiet. Can't hear the exhaust at all, only the road noise. Now I'm not sure whether it's uh, obvious to you again. And I'm going to open these valves back up again because I just enjoy it. So as a growing up commuter, this car is absolutely perfect. 70, which is the legal limit here in the UK on the motorway, it's absolutely benign. It's comfy. Let's get on to the carbon seats. So the one gripe I had about the previous car was the entry assist couldn't be switched off. That's the bit where you kind of shut the car off and the seat starts to slide back when you open the door for the easy entry function. However, I've come to realize that that was probably a good thing, especially when I use um, the kind of the steering lock or the disc lock on this. Um, and the way I've set the seat, albeit as low as I dare, I like to sit low in a car. Um, I like the steering wheel towards me. I like it adjusted quite low. Um, maybe it's just the race driver in me that you use the big muscles to turn a steering wheel, not the little ones where your arms outstretched. The fact is that the seat doesn't go back and I struggle, a bit of a tub on me here. Um, I struggle a little bit to get in and out of it. Um, I tend to be very, very cautious about the bolster wear and, and damaging the seats. Uh, and another thing with the carbon buckets is that uh, all the car is Connolly leather, where the other leather options are very standard leather. So this is Con Connolly hide, apparently, all the way through on the Sparkos. I found my position, steering wheel is straight ahead. I can take the weight off my shoulders and I can drive the rest of the day like this. I don't particularly miss the heated seats that the other one had. I don't miss the memory because I'm really the only one driving this car. I do miss the memory seats in the e-tron GT. It's got standard electric seats and when I come around to doing a video on that, if I can rustle up the enthusiasm for that, there's no more boring than electric anyway. Mm. Anyway, it, it serves a purpose. It's uh, you know a fraction of the cost to run to up and down the motorway um, for Mrs. Ed. And the reason I'm in this car today is because she's back to work um, whilst I'm away, um, and uh, she'd be doing more travelling back and forwards to Heathrow than I am. But I am so glad to say that I love these seats. I have to say, from afar, I'm looking towards it as a three thousand two hundred and fifty pounds option. In a new car, I still wouldn't be tempted to spec it. However, if you've got the money, fill your boots and tick that box. Enjoy it, absolutely. However, for me, it's always been about, can I justify that payment? I suppose driving a car like this, you shouldn't have to justify it. You either want it or you don't. And you accept that that's the cost that you have to get into something like this. I've always been that way. I've, I don't know why I've had to justify the extra and the extras and whether it's worth the money. Three thirds, over three grand, that's a, that's a new car to me. <laughs> because I've been driving 10 year old Volvo diesels to and from work before I got into my Alfa Giulia. I always had the 911 tucked away for the weekends. I've always driven kind of mundane daily drivers until um, the Alfa floated my boat. So big tick as far as the, uh, <laughs> big, big tick, big tick 
as far as the um, the seats are concerned, they add a sense of occasion. I do have to say, they they add a real, real kind of. You get in here, the stitching, the green and white, the Alcantara leather, the carbon which matches all the rest of the little bits and pieces is a glorious thing. It was one of the things that attracted me to this car because they were effectively priced in. I didn't feel as if I was paying any extra for those. The carbon roof is beautiful, although I am protecting it with a cover. Um, if you're interested, by the way, there's the, uh, the Amazon link down there. I'll put in the size as well down in the description. And it's an affiliate link. Fits the car nicely. Uh, keeps it nice and cool and keeps the heat off that carbon roof. I'm acutely aware that if there's anything kind of damaging through the lacquer into the into the carbon fiber itself, these things have a tendency to kind of spread and you get a bit of lacquer peel. So that's not unknown. That's one of the drawbacks of having exposed carbon, both in spoilers and splitters and everything else. Um, we're paying to slightly better protection than that. Um, anyway, it is what it is. The, that's what we suffer for in looks, so I really wanted to protect that with a cover. Uh, and one of, the, uh, one of the gripes I had, and I didn't put it as a disappointment at the start of this because it is being completely resolved, is a little dongle for wireless Apple CarPlay. Why Alpha could not incorporate that into 2020 cars um, with the, uh, the kind of the updated interior and the updated touch screen and everything else. Apple CarPlay and touch screens work really, really well together. Again, there's a, a, an affiliate link um, down below for the dongle. And this one supports both wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. You can get a separate um, wireless Apple CarPlay dongle. Might be a little bit cheaper than this one, but I wanted to keep the full features of the car. Should I ever go Android and should I ever pass it on to its new owner? It plugs straight into the uh, the USB, the second one in the center console. If you have a pre-facelift model, 2018 onward to 2020, then you will probably need to plug it in uh, at the front, a single USB entry. This one has got in the, uh, the glove box and it pairs seamlessly with the car. Every time I get in, and it's a, it's a thing to behold. So I've got wireless charging and I've got wireless Apple CarPlay. I thoroughly recommend that if you have it, in fact, that the phone is in my pocket, what I should really just do is pop it into the, um, the wireless charging mats there and, uh, and get it charged for the journey. So, you know what, wireless, wireless charging, wireless CarPlay, um, wireless charging, your phone is being charged. There you go, thank you very much. So watch out for full videos for uh, Apple CarPlay for this car. I'll do it right from the 2017s all the way through. 17s didn't have CarPlay, 18s did without the touchscreen, and 20s onwards had the touchscreen. Wireless charging, but no wireless Apple CarPlay. And I will tell you how to get wireless Apple CarPlay in everything. I need to get a run in this car. I need to get a proper adventure, start making memories in it. And for me, it's all about the journey. It's all about your journey with the car. It's about making memories. So whether it be Wales, Scotland, or maybe somewhere else, I'd really love to get this car back to Ireland and show you the roads that I grew up driving on as a 17-year-old. Sleeve Crew, Castle Wellen, uh, the Mourne Mountains, the coast road up to the Giant's Causeway. Um, there are plenty of places that are absolutely fantastic and I and it developed my love of cars and motorbikes in fact um, that beautiful scenery but uh, stay tuned for that one um, the other one I want to make is on the servicing pack so that'll be a full separate uh, video on that one so I'll make that once I get some more information from the independents and uh, from uh, the um, from Alpha themselves as to not taking the service pack and just paying for the um, the services myself. Uh, an update to come, of course, on the mats and uh, the service book and everything else as we go forward. So on that happy note, all is well with the car. Is it double the car? Of course it's not. Of course it's not. There is some great value to be had now, and that's another video in the making about how you can afford uh, an Alfa Julia these days for a sensible deposit and £300 a month.
Estimated time in traffic, seven minutes. Seven minutes, thank you very much. That's why Apple CarPlay works for me. Use it all the time, use the Waze app on the way to work. Um, and uh, it, it tells me when I'm gonna get there. I've got the ADAS looking after me. Why would I not love this car? As a daily driver, it's something spectacular and you may as well drive something. Do I regret it? Not a chance. So if you want to support the channel, go and buy some merch, backroadhero.com. Um, go and buy something off Amazon with the, the links, a cover or a dongle. I'm not chasing subscriptions on this channel. I want to keep it fairly intimate. Um, I'm, as I've said before, larger channels have their own problems. I quite like the crowd, quite like you um, watching this stuff and commenting, and it's the comments that keep me going. So if you got this far, please leave a comment. Um, I read them all. I either like or respond to all of them. Um, and it's the one little thing that keeps me going. So on that note, thanks very much again for continuing to enjoy my bits and pieces. So until the next time, all the best now. We'll see you again. Bye-bye. Be mad for